99, we type in 0.99 in the middle percentage, and but this one's 95. And there's our two numbers for our confidence interval. So in a bootstrap confidence interval, the two numbers are at the bottom. This is called the lower limit of the confidence interval. This is the upper limit of the confidence interval. Okay, and if you notice, actually those numbers are not too far off from what we got by formula. So they, there are, they are pretty, um, there's a little bit of a difference, but not really drastically. And the main thing is that our overall, uh, our overall understanding of these two populations is the same. We got a negative positive confidence interval, just like the formula in Stat Cato and the formula we calculated by hand in the last video. So that means there's no significant difference between the population mean amount of money spent eating out for COC stat students with, uh, without tattoos versus with tattoos. Okay, so no significant difference. So this is very, uh, very nice too. Remember also bootstrapping does require a little bit less assumptions. You do want a random sample and you do want it to be independent. Um, however, a lot of times you can do this if it failed the 30 or normal requirement, we could still bootstrap and then in other words, this, sample, this distribution here does not have to look perfectly normal for me to, to calculate the middle 95% directly. If you're going to use the old, uh, the traditional formulas with mar plus or minus margin of error and t-scores, this has got to look pretty normal. Okay, that's again where um, bootstrapping is often used when traditional formulas may break down. All right, let's go to the, another one here. So I'm going to go back to my uh, to my data here. This time I'm going to look at um, I'm going to look at uh, dealing with um, just this this categorical data, just this categorical data. Okay, so. Um, so what, what, how many people said no and how many people said yes? Uh, again, we had um, 85 people said they had a tattoo and 239 people did not have a tattoo out of the total of 324. Okay, so if I go back to, now I want to compare the percentages. So I'm going to go back here. Now this is again where we're, we want to really know how many people, a lot of times you have a big categorical data set, you don't want to count it by hand. So one thing I like to do is I just make a quick graph, a pie chart works very nicely in Stat Cato, um, and I just click on data values from worksheet and column one, which is right there. And I'm just going to make a quick pie chart, and there it is, and I can see that I had 85 people that said yes, and 239 people said no. Again, they did not give us the total, but I think we can add them. It's no big deal. It's 324 uh, total. So those are the numbers we'll need to make the two population proportion confidence interval. Again, you have to decide what's group one and what's group two. I'm going to go with the, again, the no group as group one. No tattoo is group one. Yes, tattoo is group two, kind of consistent with what we did yesterday with the traditional formula. So if I, want to, if I want to compare the percentage of people that do not have a tattoo to the percentage of people that do have a tattoo, I'm going to go statistics, confidence interval, two population proportion. Everybody see it? Statistics, confidence interval, two population proportion. I actually love the menus in StatCato. They're so easy to find. Some other computer programs are not as easy with the menus, but these menus are very nice. Um, now, you can have your raw data. You can use your raw data if you wish, um, but usually with proportions it's almost always summary counts. I usually just get the summary counts. So we're just going to type those in now. Remember group one was the proportion for no tattoo. So we're going to do uh, 239, 239. Number of events is how many people, um, uh, how many people uh, had that characteristic and then out of the total so 324 was my total and then for po for population 2 I'm dealing with stat students that do do have a tattoo so there was 85 of them 85 and the total was 324 now this one uh, we did yesterday was a 90 percent confidence interval so I'm gonna um, again I keep saying yesterday uh, in the last video uh, so 90%, we're going to change that confidence level to 0.90. 
And this is how you do a two population percentage or proportion confidence interval. All right, let's take a look. And we see the margin of error is calculated and the two numbers here. Uh, 0.4185 and 0.5322. Again, very close to what we calculated in our last video by hand with the with the formula. So really, Staccato is a traditional program. It uses the traditional formulas um, that statisticians have been using for a long time. Notice again the key. These two numbers were both positive. That means that population one uh, is between these. We think is between these two numbers larger than population two. So the pop, the, we are 90% confident that the population percentage of COC stat students that do not have a tattoo is between about 41.9% and 53.2% higher than the percentage of COC stat students that do, do have a tattoo. All right. Now, again, we could do a bootstrap on this. Again, we just have to remember these counts, 239 out of 324, 85 out of 324. So if I go back to stat key, and now you're going to click on difference in proportions. So difference in proportions, if I'm going to do a two population bootstrap for proportions, click edit data, and it'll just ask you. Now, you do have to remember group one was no tattoo. So I'm going to go 239, and again, my sample size for that group was 324, and my second one was 85 out of 324. Everybody see how I set it up? I just put the amount and the counts in, and then push OK. Here's my sample difference right here. Group one minus group two, 0.475 was my sample difference. Let's see what that shows us with the population difference might be. Again, when you bootstrap, you're taking random samples with replacement from this original random sample. So click the thousand samples a bunch of times, get a bunch of them. I like to get a few thousand at least. Now we're gonna click two tail. Now remember, this was a 90% confidence level. So we're gonna change this middle percentage up here to 0.90. Most of you have already had some practice with this, so. All right, and there we go. So there's my lower limit and my upper limit. So I'm 90% confident. Um, notice that this, these two are both positive, 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 right? That's telling me that I'm pretty sure population one is higher than population two, and it's between these two numbers higher, or I think so. So I'm 90% confident that the population percentage of COC stat students that do not have a tattoo is between these two numbers, 41.7% uh, and 53.1% higher than the population percentage of COC stat students that do have a tattoo. By the way, these are very close to what we got by formula yesterday. Um, in our last video, I, I, I uh, went ahead, this is actually very close to what we got by the formula. You can also see that the bootstrap distribution does look pretty normal. Um, this data definitely would have passed the 10 successes, 10 failures. So the, not only is the, um, you can kind of see we're getting very similar numbers to the actual formula. Now remember, in all of this stuff, um, assumptions are really key. Uh, we went over assumptions in the last video. Um, again, the accuracy of things is really tied to those assumptions, random samples, independence, um, in this case 10 successes, 10 failures. Uh, if you're dealing with means, it's um, sample size at least 30 or normal. So um, those assumptions are very much tied to the traditional formulas especially. For bootstrapping, we really just need random samples and independence. So we want a data set that's you know, as unbiased as we can uh, with people that are not related to each other. So, um, but again, we're seeing very similar numbers here. All right, now, what about the match pair? We did a match pair example um, last time, and I want to show you this idea of a match pair. This is really interesting. See, in a match pair, and then this were two, this were a random sample of 80 
uh, adults, and uh, we took their diastolic and their systolic blood pressure. Remember, systolic blood pressure is the higher number, and diastolic blood pressure is the lower number, usually, when you get your blood pressure taken. So notice, we don't calculate the mean of the diastolic and the mean of the systolic and then subtract the means. That's how you would do it if you were dealing with two population mean with separate groups. These are not separate groups. This, this number right here, 61, is the same person as this number right here, 104. So the natural thing to do is actually just subtract the, these two since they came from the same person. 61 minus 104 and you see negative 43 right here. That's called the difference. Remember how I said it's all about the difference when you're dealing with matched pair. So each time they subtracted the diastolic minus the systolic. Now it's important to know the order of subtraction tells you what's group 1 and what's group 2. So diastolic minus systolic means that group 1 was diastolic and group 2 was systolic. So population 1 is diastolic, population 2 is systolic. But we're, we're subtracting before we take the mean. So in two population mean, separate groups, we calculate the sample means and then we subtract them. In match pair, we sort of do the opposite. We subtract first and then we calculate the mean of the differences. I think we saw yesterday that's called D bar. We also calculate the standard deviation. So we're really doing a one population confidence interval of this difference column right here. That's kind of what we're doing. Now if we go to uh, Staccato, notice I've copied and pasted the, the data sets. I also copied the difference column. By the way, you can, if, you don't, if you can't see the titles, you can always put your cursor up in between the two columns where it says C1 and C2. See how it kind of gets this double arrow and just drag it open until you see the title. I can do the same thing here. I can see the title. I can see the title. So if you want to see the titles, you can always drag these open a little bit. All right, so again, if we're doing a match pair, two population mean match pair, we're going to go to statistics, confidence interval, not two population mean, go down to match pair, right? Match pair. Now, you really have a choice. Um, really, most of the time, again, for this one, we're going to have samples in columns. So notice that's what we really have. We have this raw data, samples and columns. If you knew the D bar, the, the mean of the differences, the standard deviation of the differences, and the sample size, you could put those numbers here under summary data. But we're starting with raw data, so we're just going to go column one and column two.